Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants. I'm Sandy Kreisberg, the HBS guru. Welcome to another edition of Handicapping Your MBA Odds. Today we have a 30-year-old female, a European, who has a 700 GMAT, a 3.6 from Dickinson College. For the last five years, she's been working in the world of advertising for the first two at uh, Saatchi in New York, and for the last three at a very large agency in Paris. She wants to go and get an MBA degree. What do you think about this candidate? Well, there's a lot of terrific and interesting extras. That, yes. Uh, you know, that the way she, that, that, that she's told us about, including uh, working for Saving the Lions in Africa, uh, was um, represented Dickinson at the Business Today conference, ultimate Frisbee team member, study oh, I love that in one. China, uh, independent project on new media. Then she's worked at two, at the large advertising firms, Saatchi and um, TBWA, TBWA uh, which she tells us are the most prestigious, largest advertising firms in the world, I believe it. So she's an exciting, interesting character, 30 years old. Uh, and she'd term, like to do her own innovation strategy firm, actually. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that, the short-term goal is to get the business savvy to create a new kind of innovation consultancy capable of delivering a full range of business brand solutions as a standalone unit, which is in a consultancy. That's the short-term goal. Yep. Or maybe the short-term goal is to get an MBA and then do that. Um, here's some advice. This is a very attractive profile. Uh, you can tell by reading both the lines and between the lines. She's uh, uh, exciting. Um, you know, liberally yeah. interesting uh, European who's, you know, thrived in America, thrived in Europe, is in this world of these huge advertising firms. All that's great. This goal of creating a new kind of internet, do you know what that means, John? No, but I know that innovation is an important piece of the puzzle today. Business schools are gaga over innovation. After you get in, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those yeah. things where... Here's my advice to her, okay? Say, say you want to be... You want to um, go back to advertising, become an impactful leader, and that could include doing X, Y, and Z, and you admire innovative leaders in advertising like A, B, and C. Don't, 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 don't tell business schools you want to invent something new. That's, that's okay to say after you get in, but admissions, office, admissions offices are very conservative and they want to make sure you've got a realistic idea of what's going to happen. Yeah. So this is a small point, but that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, here's she wants to go to either European schools like LBS, INSEAD, or Cambridge. I think you're quite strong at those schools uh, where you are now. I think your chances at those schools are very good. And she's a slightly older candidate as well. Yeah, you know, they, do, they do tend to accept uh, slightly right, older candidates. Right, that's true. Right. At HPS and Wharton, whew, here's some tough love. 700 GMAT, which used to be okay, is now, I hate to say it, but the facts are the facts. You might, if, if, if you really wanted to do something, you, you might try and get a 720 GMAT. That could make a difference at Wharton and could also make a difference at HBS, where it counts a little less, but even at HBS. And I bet, you know, at HBS, there aren't many women like this in, in the pool how many working for international uh, advertising agencies, both in New York and Paris. This, she comes across as a really sophisticated candidate. That's why the, I agree with you, yeah. but that's why the goals are important. You really have to, she really has to, and, and she might be able to do it. It's just, you know, a shorthand description here. She really has to be able 
my advice would be to present goals that are a natural conservative mm -hmm. outgrowth of what she's doing, pointing to mentors and saying, my goals are to be an innovative and impactful leader in, adver in international advertising, and that could mean X, Y, or Z, of which this, what does she say here? New kind of innovation consultancy. Right. That could be one of them. Yeah. But if, 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 if you present yourself as going to business schools because you want to totally reform the goals of advertising or invent a new kind of advertising, they sometimes read be between the lines and say you're a burnout. You, you don't want that to happen. Yeah. And bi business schools are in the business of trying to create leaders. I mean, that's what they want when they, when they bring a candidate in. I know, right. it's, I know it's, it's rhetoric, but it's really true as well. Um, so to position yourself as someone who has leadership aspirations in a global advertising firm right, to make an impactful good. difference yeah. is kind of where you want to be. And let me say this. There's not a lot of advertising. Right. There's not a lot of people from advertising firms who apply to business school. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's just that advertising leadership is sui generis. I, I, do you know the leaders of the uh, five biggest advertising firms? I'm, afra where, I'm afraid they have I don't. MBAs? I'm afraid I don't. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that could be. I would. I would say. Play it conservatively as to goals. I want to be a innovative, impactful leader in changing advertising business that requires many skills, including managing an international workforce being aware of the changing advertising environment, which is now becoming increasingly digital, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and that's what I would say. Okay, Harvard odds. With this GMAT score, Harvard odds, 30%, and if 30 she got a, 35%. And if she got a 720, what, what, what do you think, how would that change? Give her, give her You're a You're killing me here. That would make it 35 to 40%. Okay. Wharton. The odds probably jump a lot higher with a 720 for her. Yeah. Um, you know, there's something about advertising people in general that business schools just read as flaky. No matter really? how... Really? Yeah. Has nothing to do with Mad Men. I don't, I don't know what it has to do with. It has, <laughs> what it has to do with... <clears throat> Excuse me. Is the fact that a advertising people don't apply? That's what it has to do. Yeah. So they go, huh? Why? You know, because both Harvard and, and Wharton play up their whole marketing um, departments and the marketing, mar marketing and advertising faculty. are two different worlds. Well, they, they, I understand that they can be, but they often uh, collide together. Do they not? It, the question is, does the admissions office think so? Yeah. So that's. That's the limited nature of our inquiry. We, so, live, in a, we live in a very <laughs> narrow universe so, here. So Wharton odds? They ain't much higher than the Harvard odds in this case. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, L odds, LBS, NC odd, and Cambridge. Her odds are much better there. I think they're approaching 50%, uh, maybe even more. Uh, those schools like stories like this. She's accomplished. She's European. Uh, they don't care so much. They're, they're not obsessed with GMAT scores yet. I hope that remains the case. Right. She's, they, the schools run older. All of their European tiny quirks break in her favor. Yeah. So I think she's real solid at LBS. And her 700 is above the averages at all three schools, incidentally. Well, there you go. Yeah, and I would say she should, if she's going to apply to Cambridge, she should apply to Oxford as well. Um, sure. Who knows? You might you might get a scholarship. There you go. Well, good luck. You're going to a business school somewhere for sure. Uh, you come off as a really smart, sophisticated candidate, and any school will be very lucky to have you. I'm John Byrne for Poets and Quants. May your MBA dreams come true.